What is up, Wolfpack? Today we're going to be covering the ultimate car winter survival kit. We're going to be walking you through exactly what you need to stock up in your car to get ready for the winter, to get ready for the storms, and to get ready for potential riots. Stick around at the end of the video because we're going to be giving away one of these, one of my favorite survival knives, the SC4. We just gave away one to Kristen. Kristen, this, video, this knife is already on its way out to you. Hope you're enjoying it. It's a quarter inch of steel, 1095. I mean, it's the perfect combination of the end of the world knife, but also it has this awesome finger choil that really allows you to, to get in there and create some feather sticking or do some light bush crafting. And so this is the ultimate survival knife. We'll be walking you through how you'll be able to get one of these at the end of this video. So stick around. So let's get into uh, this, this car winter survival kit. And so as we're approaching the winter months, uh, the, the road conditions are getting more and more treacherous. And it's important that your car is stocked up with the things that you need, not only in addition to being able to take care of day-to-day -day emergencies, but also all of these new emergencies with the riots and the protesters that's going around. You want to make sure that your car is stocked up and ready to go because it is really your home away from home. And if you think about it, your car should be better prepared sometimes in some situations than actually even your house. Because while you may be in your house, let's say during normal times, 50% of the time, your car is always within walking distance of where you are, whether you're at work, whether you're at the grocery store. And so having, you know, just a mobile emergency, it's, it's your mobile command center. And so having these things stocked away in a, let's say a Plano outdoor box where, you know, someone peeking through your window doesn't see that you've got all these goodies. So let's get into it. So the first thing, one of the things, the new things that I added to my car, car survival kit, and I keep this right by uh, my driver's seat, is this home defense pepper gel. Uh, with all the riots and protests that are going on uh, around America right now, you know, you don't know when you're driving around whether or not you're going to be approaching a potential roadblock. And um, we've seen in multiple scenarios where the, the riots, the rioters and the protesters, they, you know, people get stupid in numbers. And we've seen videos of them surrounding cars. And if you're in the car with your kids, your wife and kids, the last thing you want to do is get in a scenario where they're breaking windows, where they're really trying to get into the car, where they're even potentially flipping the car. It could become a very dangerous situation. And so having this nearby um, will allow you to get one extra layer of, of potential defense. I mean, you could literally drop the window. And what I like about this is this is a pepper gel versus a pepper spray. So that way you don't get any wind blowback coming back into you, preventing you from being able to see. And so this gel, you can simply pull the pin, be able to spray at whatever's in front of you and be able to, to drive away safely uh, and hopefully with nobody being uh, severely harmed. Uh, it's way better than, I mean, we've seen even, even police cars um, drive over people. And it, that's, you know, a very scary situation. And if you could, you end up just using the pepper gel spray in front of you, clear the path. And then that way you can go on your merry way, uh, be, be home in, in, in time for, for some, some basketball and, uh, be your, your feet kicking up and enjoying yourself like nothing ever happened. And so this is actually a new addition to the, to the car survival kit that you should be looking into, uh, just to create that one extra layer of, of protection for yourself. Um, next thing, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you, you have a uh, air compressor kit. The last thing you want to do is get stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere where your, your tires are popped uh, or you, uh, you're getting low on air. And so having one of these, I also have a fix a flat. And so those are one of those spray foam adhesives that, you know, can help patch up your tire if you have like a small uh, pinhole or, or a nail stuck in your tires. And so these two things will allow you to, to, to make sure that your, your tires can stay stocked up and and you can get to the next gas station or wherever wherever you need for safety in order to to replace and you should always have a full size spare somewhere in your car on that note you also want to uh, not in addition to having regular jumper jumper cables i love this stuff this is the gulu jump starter power pack you know uh sometimes i go i go off uh, overlanding and i'm in uh, i'm you know one two hours away from uh from civilization and you know, sometimes I don't even have service. And so the ability for me to be self-reliant, what I love about this kit is that it's basically a battery bank that is, so you can see here, you've got your battery bank uh, that will attach to these, these jumper cables. And so by attaching this battery bank directly in here, and I've actually tested this out, um, 
making sure that you are able to jump your own car without needing to hook up to another car, uh, to another car. And so you are basically fully self-reliant by having this, this self-contained kit. I keep this underneath the back car seat. Uh, and so that way, no matter what, I'm able to, uh, to jump my own battery and I don't need another, another vehicle or inconvenience a friend to come out to me and, and give me a jump. I can literally be doing this myself and be on my merry way. In fact, I was on a camping trip a few, about two years ago, and I accidentally left my lights on um, while, you know, while we were camping. And when I woke up in the morning, the battery was dead. Well, guess what? The Gulu ended up uh, saving the day. And instead of having to wait an hour, two hours for AAA to come and give me a jump, I was able to just give this a jump and be on my merry way. And the alternator was, was able to charge my battery. And so even for those small little, little mini emergencies, you're able to take care of it. Um, on that note, you know, I mean, with, with all the winter storms that are coming up, uh, you know, just a, a, a few years ago, I was I was stuck in North Carolina in a, in a winter storm. And luckily, you know, uh, someone was able to come and help help us get out of the snow. But in the uh, in the interim, you want to make sure you're trying to stay warm. And so having a a wool blanket, you know, this is a representative of my lar I have a hundred percent wool blanket that I keep, but it's huge and it's heavy. And I keep that stocked up in the in, in the Jeep. Um, but this is, you know, just a nice lightweight blanket. So you can have this. You can have a survival bivy. Um, I would recommend keeping some wool socks, some wool socks and a wool cap just so you can stay warm. Um, potentially even a blow up pillow if you have to spend the night in the car. And so having a blow up pillow, you know, this is from the Sea to Summit, super comfortable. And so that way you're able to stay warm inside the car and not have to worry about, uh, you know, just just staying, you know, staying bundled up. So having having that that emergency blanket in your car will help you stay warm. Um, in addition to that, think about hygiene. So, you know, we've got some wet wipes here as well as a microfiber towel. And so if you're having to change that tire, we were just talking about that, you're able to, to, to give yourself a wet wipe and be able to make sure that you don't get grease everywhere. And then you can just use a microfiber towel to be able to, uh, to, to give that the final wipe. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have, this is a 36 hour candle, you know, just so you're not draining your batteries the whole night. Uh, in addition to that, you can get some, some minor warmth. If you've never lost dexterity in your fingers, you know how quickly that ends up hampering your mobility and the ability to have that fine motor work and to get to the point where it, it's difficult to even use a lighter. And so even just a small 36 hour candle to help warm your, your, uh, your, your fingers, uh, or just give you some light would, would be helpful. A fire extinguisher. I mean, this is a big one. You know, um, I've got one that I have mounted to the to the front of my Jeep as well. Uh, if you've ever gone overlanding in a Jeep, you know, you know, fire fires happen, and so having that fire extinguisher handy close to the pepper gel, uh, you're able to to put out some quick quick fires and not need not needing to to let that go out uh, go go too crazy. Next, emergency drinking water. So we've got this, we've got some water filters. Um, you know, I've got a full full kit in regards to my, my get home bag. Uh, we've got a whole video on my get home bag, which is in addition to all of this gear. I'll put a card up top and I'll also put the link to the description. Um, so water is super important. Food is also important, you know, I mean, whether you're having these SOS rations, so I don't have to worry about things going bad. I've also got some nuts and some other bars that I keep stocked up in the car just so for some light emergency, some jerky. But this is just one of those things that I stuck away in case of emergency for whatever reason. You know, you're, you're two, three days stuck in your car. You've got 3,600 calories uh, and not needing to worry about expiration dates. And, you know, these are designed for lifeboats and so they're definitely gonna be okay for your car. And so, you know, I bought these, I think they were like 10 bucks a few years ago and I just throw them in there and, and it's one less thing to worry about. Comms, you know, if you, if you remember right after 9-11, all of the phone, the phone lines, the text messages, they were all just slammed. You weren't able to get in contact with anyone. And so this is just a cheap $25 Bofang radio. I mean, this thing is the internet before the internet. You know, you're able to, uh, listen to, to, to weather, um, you know, the family and the wife and I were already on uh, certain, certain frequencies. And so we know which frequency to hop on in case of emergency. So that way we can communicate with each other. I mean, this thing goes, goes miles. And if you're using repeaters, I mean, there's been reports of people using this cross country. So uh, just having that Bofang radio so you can stay in contact in emergencies, I think is super helpful and making sure that everyone in your friends and family are on the, the frequencies and you know about it. And having those things written down, I think will be helpful, particularly also phone numbers. You know, when you're in an emergency, you know, you're, sometimes your memory may go. And so having those phone numbers handy and ready to, ready to go will be useful in addition to your, uh, to your frequencies. 
Uh, you know, these are some backup blades. You know, I mean, it, we, we, we have a hurricane video. I mean, what if you're, if you're going across, let's say, a back road and there is a tree, you know, going across, if you can't pull it off or for whatever reason, I mean, you can use the, the Laplander and, you know, cut your way through or clear, clear some brush. Uh, I mean, this stuff I mostly use just for camping and for, for bushcrafting, but they're so light and uh, these are extras and spares. And so I'll just throw them in my car camping kit and, and have uh, backup, backup blades uh, just for, for, for emergencies. Truck gun. Uh, I mean, depending on your state, if you can afford to, if you can legally have a truck gun, I mean, to me that I think there's, there's few better truck guns than potentially a kel Sub 2000. Um, what I like about this is it, is it is compatible with my, uh, with my main firearm, my, my, my carry firearm, a Glock 19. This thing will take Glock 19 mags. I'll also keep a, a fun stick, you know, 33 round mag in my truck. And so this will turn nine millimeter into the same velocity as a 357 Magnum. And so, I mean, there's been reports of people taking down 400 pound hogs of this thing. And so instead of just having a Glock 19, which, you know, you, under stress, you might be lucky to take a 25 yard shot. You throw this thing in and now you're taking hundred yard shots. And so, uh, you know, just having a truck gun, um, I think it just gives you a little bit of extra firepower in case you need it. What I like about this is it's super compact. It actually fits into my get home bag right in, in the, uh, in the back compartment. And so it's super lightweight. You can end up carrying it, um, you know, for, for miles if you needed to, um, you don't have to worry about spare mags. Like if you were to carry, let's say a truck on with 300 blackout or five, five, six, you can, you can keep the same mags that are on your carry gun to me, the Glock 19, and it makes it super easy to, to just, um, just pop this thing open. And now you've got a full size firearm all ready to go. And so I love the, the, the Caltech. I mean, it shoots phenomenal. This one's got all the M carbo accessories on it, which makes it even better than normal. And it does a really good job of just being able to immediately fold down. And now you've got a really compact setup. Uh, so truck gun, you know, obviously for emergencies, you, you know, hopefully you're in a situation where you never need to, to use it, but if you've got some extra firearms, uh, if you needed some extra firearm, you, you're ready to go with the, uh, the M Carbo Caltech Sub 2000. This thing, uh, I mean, this is a visor organizer. I love this thing. I mean, I, I keep this in my car. Uh, it's right on my visor. It's got all of my emergency stuff. You've got some spare, uh, spare lighter. You've got some spare cordage. Uh, this, I mean, this is the Kershaw. I'll put a link to this. This thing, I think, is one of the coolest, best bang for the buck. Kershaw in general is probably the best bang for the buck blades. Uh, I mean, this knife, I mean, I use this thing all the time, whether I'm just popping open boxes that I pick up from the mailbox. Uh, I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's, it's just a fun fidget knife. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll just be sitting there, you know, just fidgeting. I've had this thing for years. It's phenomenal. It's super sharp. Uh, it's just a great knife. And I love flipper knives because number one, it allows it to be one handed open like, like so, but the flipper itself actually acts as a finger guard. And so if you were, you know, in a situation, you don't have to worry about your fingers slipping up off your handle guard and potentially, you know, cutting yourself. So I love flipper knives. I think the Kershaw's in general are the best bang for the buck. I'm actually thinking about um, getting, they have a Kershaw flipper emergency knife that has a glass breaker and a seatbelt cutter. And so I'll be scooping one of those up pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, what I've used is just one of these, which is just, you know, this is a glass breaker. You're able to just pop this onto the glass. And then if you needed to, this is the seatbelt cutter. And so you can just slip this right through. And so I'll be getting that Kershaw blade soon uh, to replace this. So you can see here, you know, and in the event of a rollover, I've got everything all, all nearby. It's all securely fastened. So I've got the glass breakers, I've got pens, you know, I've got coffee. You can never have too much coffee. Um, and so you've got all of this stuff all within, within very close hand. I can see here, I've also got some cash and some quarters in here. You know, you can't tell you how many times you've tried to park and there's not a, a, a machine nearby. Luckily, all of the new machines are accepting phones and credit cards, but you know, every once in a while you get those old school where you, you, they still only accept quarters. And so just keeping a couple, a couple of quarters there, some cash nearby, you know, if you want to tip it out, so some tens, twenties, and some singles, uh, a triple a, a AAA card, you know, you're always nearby in an emergency. So having that triple a card, uh, I think it's, it's, it's worth, worth the investment. 
but check with your insurance. I know that with Geico, they do ro free roadside emergency. So call your, uh, your insurance companies because you may not need AAA. You may end up getting that all built into your insurance. And so you don't need to, uh, to pay for double. Um, I end up using AAA because I think they use it. They have a pretty good, um, pretty good customer service. Um, emergency cards. So you got all your emergency stuff information written out. And I keep all of my, my license, my registration, uh, not my license, I keep that in my wallet, but my registrations, uh, my insurances, I keep those all tucked away. And so if you do ever end up getting pulled over, you got that all ready to go. In fact, one time I, uh, I, I before I had this visor, um, I ended up not knowing where my, my insurance and registration was tucked away with all of the other papers that were in my glove box. And uh, while I was looking for it, the cop's like, you know what, don't worry about it. And I thought he was going to let me off the hook. But when he came back, he ended up giving me tickets for both, despite the fact that I found it in the meantime. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, I found it. And he's like, yeah, just just mail it in. And so, and, you know, this is like seven dollars. It would have saved me the hassle of needing to mail in my license and registration and my insurance, my proof of insurance with just that. I mean, it ended up being, you know, two hundred dollar ticket. Yeah, I ended up getting it, you know, um, taken away, but you know, it was it was still a hassle. And so uh, since then, I ended up picking this up, keeping everything organized. And then this was just, you know, this is the the SE emergency card uh, that came came with the SE knife. And so you just throw it in there, and it just has some some light emergency short term survival kits uh, or or tips that you can end up using uh, in an in an emergency. And if you wanted to, I mean, if you if you had some extra room. You could throw in one of these small pocket SAS survival guides. Um, you know, it kind of talks talks to you about you know just different cordage and different. I mean, I think it's you know just some body signals in case you're let's say you know in the mid in the middle of a, you get stranded in, in the middle of a desert road. Speaking of which, if you do get stranded in the middle of a desert road, stay close to your car. Uh, if a helicopter was passing by, they're going to stay close to the road. It's very easy for them to see a car. It's very difficult for them to see a body walking down the street. And so staying close to your car and be able to use your body signals. And so why not, you know, throw this in there. You've got, you got an extra SAS survival guide. It's super tiny and you're able to have some, some light reading material while you wait for emergency services to come, come your way. Speaking of on the, on, on that note, um, light, I mean, there, if you've ever been in a situation where I remember um, hiking Yosemite and um, you know, this was before I was really into survival and, and preparedness. I really only had a single battery operated headlamp and uh, I didn't even have backup batteries. And I remember like we were, we were hiking in the dark for a few hours and I remember just having a light anxiety because I mean, if you've never been in the woods when there is zero light pollution, I mean, you literally can't see your hand in front of your face when the light is off. I mean, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bears out there. There's mountain lions. And uh, you know, we were, I remember even my buddy that was with me, he was using his phone light to be able to see, we were, we were hiking on a, on a cliff face and on one side was, you know, 30, 40 foot drop. And then the other side was potential, uh, you know, just, just the, the mountain face. And so having a crank light, you know, in your car emergency kit, I love this goal zero one because uh, number, not only does it have the solar panel, but it's got the crank light. You've got a USB, so you're able to, uh, to charge a phone. Yeah, you've got a spotlight, which is nice, uh, but you've also got the floodlight. And so you could literally hang this from the top of your car and illuminate the entire car. Uh, but what I like about this is also, um, it's also got red. And so you could literally be using this as an emergency light. Um, I've also got um, torches. I have torches in the car and I have um, just flash like those flashing red lights, those electronic torches. So that way in an emergency or in an accident, you can alert people on the highway so they don't crash into you. Uh, so you can you can use this and not have to worry about it running out of battery because you could always crank it. I think like one minute of cranking ends up giving you 10 plus minutes of light. And so you've always got that. There, there's another option, the eSky, which is another crank light. Uh, it's got the solar panel, but let's, who are we kidding? That solar panel is not going to do anything. Um, it's really about the crank. And so you've got the light, you've got the radio. And so you've got a pretty good compact kit. This thing also does have a USB, uh, like a micro USB charger here. And so you might be able to charge your phone, but I, I actually don't think you, I've never tested it because what I use is this. This is a, a solar battery bank. Um, you could see here. Um, this thing, let's let's be real. It's not. It's going to take five plus days for you to get a full charge on this with really good light. 
But what it does is it has about five to five charges for your phone. And so I'll keep this thing topped off. You can keep this on your dashboard if you wanted to. So that way it would be absorbing light all the time. And then I also keep one of these multi charge cables. And so regardless of whether you have an iPhone, whether you have uh, an Android phone, you'll be able to charge any device. And so um, with just this one thing, you're, you're able to charge all of your devices, uh, whether you're using the battery bank. I also, br I also keep in my car kit uh, a USB. You know, if you're low on battery, you don't need to tap into your battery. You could literally grab this, walk into a restaurant and be charging your phone while you're eating. And so, you know, sometimes people talk about, you know, emergency and survival and they're all, all they're thinking about is the cool, the guns and the gadgets, but sometimes it's just about everyday practicality. I mean, even just having some, you know, these are some spare headphones, you know, you go to the gym and you're, you forgot your headphones and you're like, Oh crap. Uh, I'm going to have a crappy workout now, but now you've got, you know, just spare headphones. And so you putting together a kit that's actually designed for everyday practicality and not just for the worst case scenario that may be once, you know, once in a blue moon, if not ever. And so, you know, just charging your phone, having some spare calories, having some cash and some coins just for everyday use. I mean, the, the purpose for preparedness is so that you're actually prepared for everyday emergencies in addition to the, the once in a blue moon emergencies. And so having that stuff all stocked away. Uh, headlamps. I actually keep these wrapped around my, uh, my headrest. And so I have two of these, one on both sides of the headrest. And so that way, you know, if, if for whatever reason I needed light, I can literally just reach over, feel for the headrest and grab a light. And now I can start looking around and uh, find exactly what I'm looking for. In addition to that, I keep, uh, we've talked a little bit about this. This is the Black Scout Survival. Uh, I love this light. It's a thousand lumens. I think it's one of the best bang for the buck lights. I mean, this thing is as bright, if not brighter than some, some of my lights that cost twice as much like my Surefires uh, and my stream lights. I love the crenulated bezel. And so if for whatever reason, you know, you're in a situation where you're not trying to, uh, to escalate, you know, you could be searching under the car, you could be searching your engine. Uh, I mean, what I also like about the crenulated bezel, in addition to the self-defense component is you could literally just put this here and you get some ambient light. And so I love the, the aggressiveness because, you know, you put this on the floor, let's say next to you changing the tire and you'll still be able to get some ambient light, or you can end up using, you know, this one and get the, uh, you know, you could put this on the ground and you can have some more light. And so light is incredible. It is your number one uh, self-defense tool. And so you want to make sure that you have enough light. Uh, so that way, regardless of what you're doing, you'll be able to, uh, to see properly. Having some, a multi-tool. I think this is probably one of the coolest multi-tools. This is the one-handed trekker. Uh, I love this thing. I mean, if you, if you really think about what, what the best multi-tools have, they've got a straight edge blade. They've got a saw. They usually have an awl. And so that way you're able to punch into, uh, into fabric. Let me just pull this out real quick. So you've got an awl, so you're able to punch into fabric and sew if needed. I mean, yeah, you, you can, you know, you've got, you've got a bit driver, but that's really all you need. And what I'm actually going to be upgrading, they have this thing called the Firefly, which replaces the, the useless toothpick, which you can just carve from any wood nearby with actually a mini fire steel. And so with this one handed trekker, you've got everything you need. You have, uh, you've got your blades, you've got your saws, you've got fire once you've, once you've replaced that. And so this can just slip into a pocket and you've got like a little mini survival kit just, just from this little one handed trekker. Um, for the car survival kit, I also include a Leatherman. I, uh, I use the Leatherman Surge. I've got that in my glove box. And so that gives you the pliers and the bit drivers and, and a couple other tools. And so that's an, an, an additional way. Um, in addition to that, I also do have hand tools. So that includes, you know, your tire irons. It includes, uh, I have one of those, uh, those monkey wrench pliers. With that, I mean, you could do 90% of, of some light car emergency repair. I mean, let's, let's be real. You're not going to be changing an alternator or, uh, or doing, you know, uh, some major repairs on the road, but with some, just some basic hand tools, you'll be able to do 80 to 90% of your car emergency repair kits, uh, whether that's changing a tire or, uh, swapping out a battery or whatever, or whatever that may be. Speaking of which, you know, you want to make sure you've got a good, good set of gloves. Um, I love these, these impact gloves. I mean, they, they definitely help protect your hand when you're trying to, to, to let's say, uh, use some heavy machinery. But in addition to some heavy gloves like these, you know, you can get some cheap gloves. Make sure you have two sets of gloves. You know, if you've ever tried to dig yourself out of a ditch, two hands is better than one. And so that way you can end up having some extra gloves. But you also want to have some gloves 
they give you a little bit of dexterity. And so these are some really like tighter leather gloves. And so if you're changing tires, if you've never slipped on a tire wrench and busted your knuckles, you know how painful that can be. And so, you know, using something like this with the impact. And so this will prevent your, your hands from getting busted up. Um, but something like this. Speaking of fires, if you're ever in a situation where you are caught up in a fire, don't leave your car. Uh, a lot of the end of, a lot of the deaths end up being you know, people will see a fire coming towards their car. They panic, they jump out of their car, and they end up uh, either gassing out of uh, out of oxygen or they actually ended up getting consumed by the fire. So if you do see a fire coming towards your way, stay in the car. Uh, turn off your air conditioning if you could. Turn on the filter so that way it's circulating inside the car rather than bringing in. Uh, fumes from outside the vehicle. Sometimes these fires go so fast they end up just passing over the vehicle uh, as they're passing through all of the brush in the, air, in the outside area. And by staying in the vehicle, you end up staying safe. And so I uh, want to make sure you don't end up being one of those that the unfortunate few that end up getting impacted by, uh, by all these forest fires that are occurring in the West Coast of the United States. And I know, I know our uh, brothers and sisters out in Australia were dealing with that in early 2020, which is crazy to think because that felt like it was five years ago. Uh, so with that, uh, let's, let's continue to move, move along. The next thing that I think uh, is so critical, and I know it's, it's not as sexy as a first aid kit, I put this underneath the passenger side on the driver's side door uh, right behind my vehicle. And so I'll t typically tuck this under the, the seat. Uh, it, it usually is, is Velcroed to the floor to avoid it from, uh, from uh, going crazy. You've got a first aid kit here. Outside here is mostly just a boo-boo kit. So it's got your Neosporin, it's got your battery, uh, your, uh, your Band-Aids. And so this is the stuff you're, you're gonna use in, in most, most scenarios. But on the outside, on this actual main kit, this is the, the, the full trauma kit. And so you've got your, you've got your emergency trauma shears here, uh, but inside the kit itself, you've got, um, you've got a tourniquet, you've got, um, you've got some, some, you've got a tournament tourniquet, you've got quick clot, you've got compressed gauze, you've pretty much got everything you need to handle most emergencies. Uh, if you don't know, you know, if you don't know how to use a tourniquet, I highly recommend you take a trauma course in order to learn how to use it. Uh, it'll help save, you know, 80 to 90% of most fatalities are caused by, by bleedage to your extremities. And so if you're able to learn how to use a tourniquet, you know, uh, I keep one here, I keep another one in the car. Uh, so you, you should learn how to use a tourniquet because if you do end up coming up on a, uh, on a car accident and you don't know what you're doing, um, while you're waiting for 911, you may end up being able to save someone's life and prevent them from bleeding out. And so, you know, whether that's for yourself or for your family or for a car, for strangers that come your way, uh, I've also got, you know, just nitrile gloves in here. I've got everything that you need all stocked up in this first aid kit. And so you want to have that all stocked up and ready to go. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, the stuff that's in here, the, the headphones, duct tape, you know, you can never have duct tape, you know, what's that old adage? If it moves and it shouldn't use duct tape, if it should move and it doesn't use WD-40. And so having those two things in your car will allow you to, uh, you know, handle most, most situations. I've also got some, uh, some compactor bags in the car. And so if you did get a situation where your windows are busted up and you're driving through, you could use the duct tape as well as the, the compactor trash bags to really, you know, make, create a makeshift, makeshift window until you can get to a nearby repair center to fix it. This is representative of gravel. Um, so you can keep, if you, you know, luckily I'm in Texas, so we don't deal with a lot of snow, but when I lived in Seattle, I would keep a bag of cat litter, uh, because with the cat litter, you're able to sort of, you know, put this on the, on the snow or on the ice. And if your car is stuck in a ditch, you're able to get a little bit of traction to help get yourself out. If you didn't have that, you could always use your floor mats. You could always pull out those floor mats from, from your car, stuck, stick them inside your, your underneath the vehicle, and then that way you're able to build some traction and get out of that ditch. Um, if you also wanted to, you could also use those really cool car tracks, those orange things that are usually on the side of those overlanding vehicles, and, and stick it under, whether you're over mud or in a ditch, and you're able to, to get the traction and, like I said, get out of those ditches and get out of those vehicles. On that note, um, you know, we talked about the fun stick, you know, there's a 30 round fun stick you can use for the Caltech, or you could pop it into your Glock 19 or Glock 45. Watch my video on why I ditched my Glock 19. I'll put a card up top. Uh, it's, it's a really good video about why, uh, I ditched my Glock 19, what I ended up using instead. This, uh, SOG 
this is a SOG shovel. Uh, I love this thing. I think it's, 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 it's really sturdy. Uh, you can end up digging yourself, like we mentioned, out of the ditch. You can end up get, you know, if you're stuck in mud, whatever you may need. This thing is just phenomenal. I mean, you can end up using this as a seat. You can end up using this uh, in your campsite. Uh, it's really, really solid. I love this thing. Uh, all it takes is you just sort of unscrewing here and be able to fold it down and it ends up being in a super compact, super compact situation. So you can turn this into a seat and you could be sitting here if you wanted to, or you can end up just folding this thing down the whole way through. And so let me, let me show you how this thing works. And so you can see here, the whole thing packs down. It takes up no room at all. And so, you know, with, with this, you can literally stick this inside of your, your Plano outdoor box, but you've got all, practically a full size shovel here. Uh, and you could probably put more than two. You could probably put two of these. Uh, so that way, you know, your buddies can help out. And so if you do, if you do a lot of overlanding, uh, having that extra shovel would be helpful. Hand sanitizer. I know this stuff is like, you know, it's green gold right now. I'll just keep this in my driver's side door. And so giving it one or two pumps will make sure that my hands are clean. Uh, let's say before I'm heading into a restaurant or maybe when I'm coming back. And so that way you're not dealing with, you know, germs and, you know, we're heading into flu season and all that other fun stuff. Next glow sticks. I mean, in addition to, in addition to road flares, you know, being able to crack these and throw them and strew them on the highway can make sure that you are staying safe while you're changing a tire, let's say on the side of the highway. Uh, you know, sometimes when people are, are drunk, they end up just looking at the lights in front of them and uh, using that as a, as a way to guide themselves on the road. And if your lights are on, on the side of the highway, they may actually mistaken you for being part of the road and actually end up crashing right into your vehicle. A lot of fatalities happen that way. And so being able to you know, put this uh, for hundreds of feet leading up to your vehicle or really being able to pull over to the side of the road will make sure that you stay safe. And so having some glow sticks, having some road flares, having some of those blinking lights like the ones we mentioned here will make sure that you stay safe. In addition to that, make sure you can get an orange vest or use an orange cap. Uh, I've got some Hunter orange vehicle, uh, uh, equipment that I'll, that I'll keep in the car and I'll be able to wear them to make sure that I'm staying safe on the highway. Um, you know, sometimes people will put like a baseball bat. I don't, I don't recommend this. I mean, if you've never, you know, I mean, I, I think like what would be better is one of those large D cell mag lights that the old school cops used to use. I mean, this thing, it's just inviting information. It's better just to have a flashlight. It's like, Hey, you know, I'm just using this as an opportunity to, 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 to illuminate my path. But if you needed to, you can end up uh, using it. Same with these like, you know, cheapo flea market, you know, stun gun lights, just use an old school mag light it's about the same size and it's a way it's way heavier and you're able to uh to take care take care of anything and like we said light is your number one self-defense tool so having those big d cell lights i have one to be honest i don't know where it is i was looking all over the all over my house for it and i, I think i stocked it up somewhere so i have to go look for it it's been a while since i've used it but getting one of those, those large d cell mag lights, I think would be super helpful. And the last thing, honestly, this goes back to the whole practicality. I've used this thing more than probably a lot of the things on here. It's just an umbrella. So being able to whip out an umbrella and be, be the hero when you're out with, you know, on a date night with your wife and things start to, uh, start to rain, you're able to pop this thing out right from the back of your Jeep and make sure that the both of you stay dry. So, uh, you know, this is obviously in addition to my get home bag and my get home bag has way more goodies than all of this stuff on the table. And so regardless of the situation that you're able to put yourself in, you can feel like, Hey, I've got, I've got that handled. And so if you haven't watched that video, check that out. I hope this video was helpful. I hope this allowed you to, uh, maybe, maybe come up with some of your, some of your own ideas. Did I miss anything? If I did, let, leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear, hey, I'd love to hear your suggestions in terms of what else I could be adding to this kit. It's always evolving, it's always tweaking, and I'm always trying to make sure that we've got the best stuff possible. All right, so with that, let's talk about how you'll be able to win one of these brand new SE4s. So th thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. I mean, this channel's grown so fast because of the community. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And so I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to sending out one of these. We've already sent out uh, I believe five of these, one to Dan. Dan, if you're out there, I hope you're enjoying it. Jeff, Travis, Toby, and Kristen's the, the, the latest winner. And so we'll be sending out one of these once we hit 4,000 subscribers. And so if we're under 4,000 subscribers, we should be hitting this in the next week to two weeks. Uh, we'll be sending out this, this awesome SE 
for survival knife. It is the perfect survival knife. So really looking forward to sending this out. If you're watching this after we've hit, um, after we've hit 4,000 subscribers, check out the latest video and we'll walk you through how to win it. So how do you win this? Number one, make sure you hit sub that subscribe button. Uh, if you're a subscriber, then you leave a comment. That's all you have to do. Subscribe, leave a comment, and you'll be instantly entered to win this the, for the 4,000 subscriber giveaway. What I would also recommend you do, turn on notifications. I had to track down Toby. Toby, if you're out there, it took a while for me to get, get in contact with you. Turn on notifications so you're aware when we announce the, uh, the winner, uh, which should be happening very soon. The next is that we wanna make sure that you uh, hit the thumbs up because when you hit the thumbs up, it actually increases the algorithm for YouTube. So we're able to give out this knife sooner, faster, and stronger. So really looking forward to sending this out to one lucky subscriber. Just all you gotta do, subscribe, leave a comment, hopefully a good comment that talks about anything that I've potentially missed or any other suggestions. And we will be looking forward to sending out one more of these awesome SC4 survival knives to one lucky subscriber. Thanks everyone. Stay safe out there. Cheers.